Hi, I'm Christopher Dean, and welcome to part 16 of a tutorial series where we build a design system in Sketch. This time we're doing desktop and mobile footers. And okay, it's been a while, but I've been looking for a new job, and I'll be able to tell you where I'm about to move to in the beginning of October. But now let's get into it. Here we are in Abstract. We're going to go over to the left and select Master. This is what we did last time. The headers for desktop and mobile, so now we're going to do footers. Let's go to New Branch. Add Desktop and Mobile Footer. Create Branch. Okay, and then we're going to open and sketch up here on the top right. Okay, and this is what we'll be making. Now, it took me around a week of playing around with this to put this together, so we're probably going to put the two side by side as we build this, just to speed things up, so we can get through the desktop version there and the mobile version there. If we have a quick look at the mobile version, this is stacking everything on top of each other, so we can do things like reducing this text, And everything just moves up. Changing it to be 320. And everything moves down. Awesome, let's go back to the desktop version. Now this is very heavily reliant on auto layouts stacks function, which is fine, but we grab it and resize it. Gets to a certain point then resizes, and you can see the text there on the left, moving that social area down. Okay, and I bet you can't wait to get into this, so let's do it. We're in the main design system sketch file. It's gonna go over to symbols, zoom out, resize this window to see how much of the other one we can see, just so we can build this quickly. Now open symbols there. Okay, and it's starting off at 1920 by 432. So let's go and grab this artboard, duplicate it, move it over until it's at 2500x and 4000y. Let's zoom out here. And go and rename this desktop footer. We're gonna ditch mobile for now, just keep it desktop. Zoom in. What I might do is just collapse everything else except for the one that we're focusing on. And we can see that there is a container folder and a background folder. The container folder sets the fixed width and the background is just the background color, as we can see here. We've also got a border horizontal at the top of there and there, and white pretty much takes up the whole thing. So let's drop a white color in there first. Here we go, color, color white. Zoom in, bring it all the way over here. Change that to 1920 by 432. Let's move it down a little bit. Move it to the top of the content folder. Group it and call this footer forward slash footer desktop. Let's just make a symbol out of it now. Let's go grab that symbol. Where did it go? It's right there. It's probably going to drive you guys a bit nuts having only this much room to work with. But yeah, if I had to do this again from scratch, we'd be here for like three hours. It's pretty full on. Let's drop that on top of the other one that we just made. Move the 
color white out of that folder. Go back to the artboard and delete the placed one. Okay. Let's group this and call it BG for background. So we're going to select the color white, pin it at the top, left, bottom, and right. Check the background folder. It doesn't have any settings applied to it. While we're in there, we're going to go and place this symbol in there. Border, border, horizontal. Set it to zero, zero. Check its positioning in here. So we've got left, top, and right. Uh, we should make it 1920 first. And left, top, right. Let's open this up. And its height is set to one pixel minimum. Let's duplicate that and move it down. Change its order. Zoom in can, so we can see it. Okay, this one is at 80. Let's move that there. And I think that's set that where it needs to be. Okay, and what's the first thing in that container? A container background, which is 1440 by 432. Let's put that in our new symbol. Just gonna draw a rectangle. Give it its size. Position it where it should be. I'm gonna group this. Name the folder container. Rename it container background. It's gonna give that the style of shape surface bounding box. Okay, the next thing, let's start from the top with the top two columns. There they are right next to each other. The first one just has text inside it and the second one has a form field and a button. So you can do something like subscribe to someone's website. Okay, so this one is 688 by 80. Let's just drop another rectangle in there. Group it, call it footer, forward slash footer desktop, forward slash top, forward slash col1. Turn that into a symbol. Zoom out, go and grab that symbol. There it is. Move it back into place. and move it below the footer. Just gonna place it somewhere nice. There we go. Okay, if we look at how this one is structured, it's just got a background and a text layer. So I'm gonna select that background layer and rename it colon one background. Let's move that shape outside that folder and delete it. We're gonna select it and give it the shape surface bounding box. Pin it to the left, top, right, and bottom. That's correct. And then we're gonna enter some text. So we'd like to have DT H H4 primary left. Just type text, bring it up to zero from the left, 
center it vertically. Give it a size of 688. Okay, left, right, and horizontal. There. Let's zoom out and duplicate it. Let's place that here. And then rename it column two. Okay, if we go and have a look at what's inside it, there's a form field and a stacked folder. Okay, let's go and grab that. By going document, form, input text, default. We can delete that text underneath it. We're going to rename this input so it's easier to override in the override settings. We're going to place it 16 pixels from the top and zero from the left. Its width is going to be 464. I'm going to go to the end of it and place a primary button in there. Button, button, primary, primary, default. That's going to be 16 pixels away from it. And its size is going to be 208, which it is. Fantastic. Let's zoom out. Now we need to group these two. Let's move the button down there first and rename it button. Let's rename this background layer column two as well. Select them and group them. Rename this folder form. Let's have a look at the stacked settings here over on the right. Yeah, it's just doing it automatically. So let's do it here. So it's horizontal and then left aligned. Okay, so we're gonna move this down underneath this. Zoom back out, duplicate it by holding down Alt, Shift, Drag. Move it up here. Okay, and you can see that this one is named footer, forward slash footer desktop. forward slash bottom, column one. Let's keep the background, but delete the form. Just change the background back to background. Change its size to 328 by 304. Let's drop on the logo Logo primary mark, change its width and height to 32. Change its name to logo mark, just in case you want to swap it out in the overrides. And it's positioned at zero and 48. It's sitting there by itself and it's top left and fixed width and height. So let's do that here. Top left, width and height. That's just some paragraph text. So let's drop that in there by using document DT P P black left. It's going to type in about text because underneath your logo or your brand mark, there should be something about your company in the footer. If you want to do it that way, that is. All right. This is full width as well, so 328. 
and it doesn't have any pinning options. Okay, so I'm going to move that below the logo mark. At this point, we're going to group them, but not turn on stacks yet. You can see that that's already done something there. Why? Hmm. Is it this folder has some settings on it? No. Okay, that's back to normal. Underneath that is a social folder, but it's got a H4 heading in it. So let's go grab that. DTH H4 black left. And we're just gonna call this heading. Change its width to 328. Zoom in and place it here. Move it down, group it, change this to social. Underneath that, we've got three icons for the social links that are all in another folder that is using auto layout stacks. So we're gonna use the Facebook one first by going document icon 24 icon Facebook primary. Move that into here. It's going to zoom in to make sure I'm getting pretty similar placement. Yep, I believe I've called that icon one. So we're going to do the same thing here. Let's move that below the heading. Duplicate it. Move the one below it around there, duplicate it again and move the one below it to there. Call this icon two and this icon three. And here we can just select icon two, go over to here, go to icon and select icon Twitter primary. That'll swap it out. We can do the same here for YouTube. Icon, icon 24, icon YouTube primary. Okay, let's select all three of them and group them. Call that folder icons. Let's turn on stacks. Pin it to the left, top and right. Let's just select header. Go over to type DT, P, P small, black, left. Type in there and I think it's option G, yeah, get your copyright. Let's move that up here. Type in 2018 after it. Okay. That can be changed to 328 wide. Let's just check we've done everything right. Okay, this has to be underneath icons. And then we're gonna turn on the stacks function and the pinning options. Ooh, we have to move this outside. Pinned to the top and left with fixed width and height. Okay, fingers crossed. First, we're gonna pin it to the left, top and right. Turn on stacks. And everything just moves into place. Gonna move this down one actually. All right, and that's the first column done. Let's zoom out and in our working file. Okay, we just need to duplicate this and move it over. Let's 
swap the heading and the text. Delete the social folder. And just copy link. How many do we have? Six. Okay, and hopefully that is it for that one as well. Now let's go and construct the rest of the footer. Gonna zoom out so we can see this one here. And just for now, I might hide the inspector on the sketch window that we've got on the right. I'm gonna go to view, uncheck shell inspector, move that over, zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're building. Okay, and the first one is already there. And it's in a container folder. Let's just close everything out. We're gonna drop in that second one. Let's go document, footer, footer desktop, top, column two. Let's move that into place here. And what are its pinning settings? And yeah, I need the inspector to see that, so let's turn it back on. But you're all cracking up when I did that. You're gonna need that later on, Chris. Yeah, you are. Okay, they are positioned without anything there. Okay, so let's move column one to the top. Rename it. Footer top. Col one. Just gonna copy that and paste it into the one below. Rename that number two. Okay. We're gonna group those and call this columns. We're gonna group it again and call this row top. Let's select container background, drop in footer, footer desktop bottom, column one. Okay, we can see I haven't renamed this one properly. Let's go over here and rename this number two. Let's go back up. This is gonna be placed directly under the top row. Let's go and place the second column next to it. Column two, there it is. Okay, now the placement of these has to be very accurate. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got the same placement, 616. Yeah, I'm gonna move that down there. I'm gonna rename this footer, bottom, column one. Copy that and paste it into the one below and call this column two. I'm gonna duplicate this a couple more times. Rename them three and four. Zoom in, make sure I've got their placing accurate. Okay, we're gonna grab all those columns, group them, rename this columns, group it again and call this row bottom. And we're pretty much ready to set up our pinning options and stacking options, here we go. With this folder selected, we're going to set pin left and right. And our stacking options are pretty much the default. So let's just turn it on. Let's 
gonna save where we're at. Okay, let's go one up to row bottom. That is set to left, top and right. We're gonna turn on the stacking for the row top columns. Let's find out what that is. Okay. And row top is set to left, top and right with a height of 80. Okay. Does background have anything? No. So the only one that's left is the container. Let's select that. Okay, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. We want to make the container stay at its width of 1440 with a percentage of 100%. So as soon as the parent element, which is the symbol itself, gets below 100%, it's gonna scale in. But it'll stay that width no matter how wide it goes. Let's see if it's worked. Let's go container. Pin it to center horizontally. Ooh, it moved over. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn on width. Change this to zero. Squashes everything, you see that? Change this to 100. Change this to zero and change this to 1440. Okay. Let's center it. Okay, things are broken everywhere, look at that. We can already see that these social icons need to be all set to width and height. 24, that's gonna fix them there. Let's go and have a look at row top. Okay, this could be the problem here. I change this to zero, this to 16. The width of both of them is 688. That looks like it's fixed that. Let's just save where we are. Now we've got to fix these columns in the bottom. So row bottom is 80, 16, and 16. Okay. Okay, now that, has that done it? Has that fixed it? Very complicated. Let's just save where we are. Go over to the main artboard for desktop. I'm just gonna size this out for now. Zoom in and drop it as footer, footer desktop. 
Let's place it where it should be. Okay. And here we go. All right. That looks like it's fixed it. That button's getting cut off a bit though. So we're gonna have to go back. And sometimes a good way to troubleshoot your nested symbols is to go back to where it is and just place it here. That way you'll be able to see any changes we make up here happen automatically. Okay, so it's getting cut off. So what is the difference between that one and this one? It's got a height of 48. This is a height turned on as well. The form folder is set to 16 and 0, 0. Okay, let's pin that to the left, top and right. And it's stacking options on this one and left aligned. What are they here? Okay. Hopefully this should fix it. So let's go down and rescale this again. Yep, it looks like it's done. Okay, and from here you can fill it with some content. We go back to the one that I put together before. I've got subscribe for all the latest from Desen. You can see that over here in the overrides and footer top column one is the same as if you did it over here. Okay. Let's turn off the text by adding a space and we can add something like enter your email address. I'm just gonna copy it from here. into the placeholder text. The about text has been changed to, if you've ever wanted a practical way to learn the tools and services that create and manage design systems, then this series is for you. Let's go and grab that. Let's place it in here. It's gonna push everything down below it. Just like that. The heading below that can be changed to social and you've got access to those icons there. So if we wanted to change YouTube to something like Google Plus or Instagram, we can do that straight away. And the copyright text, you can change to something more appropriate like 2018 Dezen all rights reserved and the columns on the right make up the content for your website so those can be anything and I'll leave that up to you okay and that's the desktop footer now we're gonna make the mobile footer Gonna delete this, zoom out, duplicate this artboard, move it over here to the right until it's at 5000x and 4000y. Let's change these artboard names to desktop footer. and mobile footer. 
zoom in here, change this to mobile. It's gonna say where we are. What do we need here? We've got a symbol that is 360 by 704. Now you notice there's some extra space at the bottom because nothing's perfect. We have to give that extra space so when the text pushes everything down, those rows get moved down as well. But there's enough space so they don't disappear underneath the symbol because as good as auto layout is, it's not perfect. And you'll soon see why. If I go over to the main artboard here, To be able to have a footer like this where that text pushes everything down and this text pushes everything down. You can't set fixed positioning. So if you give it a bit of space, then you can go and take some of that text out and everything's okay. Let's go back to symbols. Okay, so we're gonna need color white again. Let's go document, color, color white. Let's go place that in there. Change that to 360 by 704. Group it. Call this footer forward slash footer mobile. Zoom out and create a symbol. Go and grab that symbol. Bring it back to here. Move it into place. Go back to the artboard and delete the one that's placed there. Okay, now let's look at the structure of the one on the right. Like the desktop footer, it's got a container and a background. We've already got our background, so just rename this folder background. and that's set to pin left, top, right, and bottom. Okay, the first thing we need is an H4. Let's go to DTH, H4 primary center. Type in text, change its width to 328. center it, and that's 24 from the top. It's got a border above it. Let's group it actually and call this row one. Let's drop in that border. That's gonna be at zero, zero, 360 and it's pinning options at top with a height of one. The pinning options on the text are left and right. Let's do that now. Let's group this folder and call it rows. We're going to duplicate row one and move it down. And we need another symbol for this too. It's going to be a duplicate of the one that we used on the desktop, but we're gonna change it a bit. So we're gonna go and grab that one over here, duplicate it and bring it over. Move this to the top. This one, we 
we change to mobile. Column two, that's okay. We're gonna turn off stacking and also unpin it. Then we're gonna change the input field to 208 in width. I'm gonna bring that button over, make sure it's 16 pixels away. Change it to 104. Change the background to 360. Change the width of the symbol to 360. I'm going to turn on pinning again and stacks. Okay, does this have the same setting? Yes. Okay, we should be good to go. I'm going to come back to our symbol and place it in here after calling this row two. Sixty four from the top and centered. There we go. Now we can get rid of that thing there. Does it have a border in its folder? No, it's just by itself. So let's delete that border. In row two, does it have any pinning options to it? Interesting. Let's get straight into row three. This has the border up the top, then the logo mark, then the about text. So I'm gonna select the background and drop in the logo primary brand mark. It's gonna be changed to 32 in width and height. I'm gonna group it, call this row three. Move this underneath here. I'm going to go and copy that border, move it into there, and bring it down to there. It's 184 from the top. Move this down one more. I'm going to center this. Rename it logo mark, just like we did in the desktop. Okay, we're going to drop in DT P P black center. That's going to be 328 wide. centered and 232 from the top. Let's turn off our guides there so we can see this a bit more clearly. Row four has the heading, the icons folder, the copyright and a spacer at the bottom. Let's just give it a bit of extra Padding. So I'm going to duplicate row three, move it down, rename it row four, delete that and this. Grab this text and change it to DTH h4 black center call it heading and it is 272 from the top okay i'm just going to go and copy and paste the social icons from the desktop one
place them under that heading, center them, and they are 306 from the top. I can go grab the copyright from the desktop as well. Copy that. Paste it in here under the icons folder. Move it down, center it, change its alignment to center. change the grid settings and this symbol to 8x8. Eight eight. Okay, and what happened there? Okay, I need to turn these off, that's right. And only turn them back on when they're positioned properly. What were they? 3 or 6 from the top. Let's move this back up. and into place. I'm gonna go grab that spacer. I'm letting up one of these at the moment, so let's drop it in. Resize it to 360 by 16. Place it directly under there. Okay. About text has left, right, and horizontal positioning turned on. So does this one and the copyright. Okay, I'm going to duplicate row four, move it down. It's going to be at 392 from the top. Let's rename it row 5. I'm going to copy this border, place it at its top. Delete everything else. and go grab our row items. At row forward slash row item, white. Gonna place that in there, move it below there. Change its height to 48. Change its label to heading. Okay, something's going on there. Let's select our labels and select auto alignment instead of fixed. Let's go back. Okay, that's fixed it. We're gonna rename this row item one. Duplicate it three more times. Rename these two, three, and four. Group them. Call this row items, turn on stacking, okay, do they have any pinning options? No, okay, what are the stacking options, here we go, okay, that should be fine. 
Now, let's go set up these stacked options for everything else. It's going to close all the rows. And from top to bottom, let's group this, rename it container, select container, okay, it's pinned at the left top and right. We're going to select stacks, change this to 16, and hopefully it'll all work. Let's zoom out, place it in here, by going document, footer, footer mobile. Okay, it's doing the same thing. Let's change its text to what we've got over here. Subscribe for all the latest from Dizen. Goes in that top text. We can add a space to text and then email address, whoops, to the placeholder text. The label of the button can be submit. The about text can be the same as this. So let's go and copy it all. Move it over here. Move everything down, just like we wanted it to. The heading can change to social. The copyright can change to This and these headings again can be anything you want them to be. Let's resize it. Okay, and 320 is the sweet spot for like an iPhone 4. That's great. Let's set to original size. Let's go to our artboards here and place it in the 360 wide symbol. It's a pretty big header, so we're gonna have to make this at least 1000 pixels high. Okay, and that's it. We've got responsive footers for desktop and mobile. Let's now commit these changes. Type in desktop and mobile footer, done. Select commit changes at the bottom right and abstract. Go over and select merge branch. Select Merge and Archive. Okay, we're done. But I'm gonna rename this Design System. Here we go. It's about time, isn't it? The next one's gonna be about turning this into a library. Probably separating out the header and footers that we've made into a Design System web library. And then using both of those to show you how easy it is to bring in these symbols, nested symbols and shared textiles and shared shape styles into a new sketch file. But that's it for now, so I'll see you next time. Bye.